There we go. So good to see you. It's been for, it feels like it's been forever now. <laughs> like, I know, it feels weird not having yeah. seen you. I know, in one week. Well, you're part, such a part of my life now. I know, same here. I mean, yeah. Did you, thank you for doing that post. Did you actually do the, the non-video post last week? Yeah, it was a community yeah. post that should have appeared to everyone who was subscribed. It came up instead of the video, only because I know it came up on my uh, subscription feed. Yes, I am subscribed to us. Oh, good. <laughs> Number one fan. I think I probably <laughs> am too. Actually, it's my account that I watch YouTube from, so I don't think I can be subscribed to us through my own account, which is why I didn't see it. And I like went and looked for it to read what it said, but that's why I didn't know. But I, yeah, I never actually told you. It was didn't show um, just a, kind of an FYI, um, updating people on the situation, but nothing too detailed because I know that you would want to probably A, address it yourself, but B, I don't want to impose on your own. Oh, thank you. Yes. But just basically saying um, how understanding all of the subscribers and viewers are and how we knew they'd understand for us not making a video. Yeah. Support. So uh, for those of you, I guess, who are, wait, I'm not in focus, am I? Um, now am I in focus? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, for those of you who don't know, my cat passed away last week, so I, it was actually, on Monday she had not passed yet, but that was, well, Monday is the day that we normally record, and on Monday she had not passed yet, but that was the last day of her life. So we had a, you know, a vet visit, I was doing lots of crying and I was not available for podcasting, which was obviously the right choice. It what felt a little bit of a bummer. Like, well, I mean, that day felt like a huge bummer for many other reasons, more important reasons than podcasting. But I also like had made this big announcement to like be committed and then after two episodes, I was like, well, I can't, what? No, I can't. But I mean, yeah, that's understandable, I think. I don't know why I don't need to be hard on myself about that. No, not at all. I think that's, one, that's the day. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you for your support and understanding. Um, Tim and I are very heartbroken, but we're trying to make sure to continue to fill the house with love and happy memories and you know we're just like crying and holding each other and like laughing about silly stories and um i'm happy that she's not suffering anymore it was really surprising and quick and that was the awful part about it um but she was 14 you know not super old for a cat but she was a senior cat so and she had a she had a good life I, I think I hope you know I loved her a lot so I'll say she seemed I've only met her once or I only met her once but she seemed a very happy cat to me thank you and definitely out. I can't think of two people who love their cat more than <laughs> you and she was very well loved and very well looked after. Thank you. All that little, just remember Tim wiggling. I don't know what you call it. You know, he had the toy on a stick and a feather. Yeah, it's called the stick. It's called the stick toy. <laughs> That's what we call it. I had every night he would go, Lola, do you want to play stick? And so that was what it was called. It was, it was stick. It wasn't even the stick. It was stick. Um, stick. <laughs> The game was called Stick. Anyway, yeah, it was really cute. He made this, Tim, a long time ago made, uh, I've always, she's always loved to play with sticks and to chase things. Um, and um, when I, before I met Tim, I uh, had this like yard stick that I would drag on the floor and like the tip on the floor and she would chase after it a little bit, but then, um, Tim 
uh, I met him not like, but this was before we were dating. We met through friends and he was over at the house and he um, made a little football out of a uh, plastic bag and then um, attached it to the string and then attached that to the stick and then waved it around. <laughs> and she went so crazy for it. Like, I've never seen her that excited about a toy. And so that was when I knew Tim was uh, the one. I mean, not really. I mean, that was, there were many other indications later on to know that he was the one, but like, you know, that was when I knew he was a good guy. And Tim and I have been talking about how a lot, how like, I feel like Lola chose me, um, and then I feel also like she chose him, so she sort of brought us together, yeah. and... I do, from the story you told me, I definitely feel as though she was kind of your matchmaker, really. Yeah, yeah. Wait, she... did I tell you a different story than what I just said? Well, no, there's the fact that Tim made friends with Lola more than right. first, before he kind yeah. of necessarily made friends with you, and I feel like she was sort of... She made friends with Tim, was like, he's the one. Yeah. Emily, most of the matter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She brought him into the family. Uh, yeah. yeah. I was okay with it. I mean, I it was pretty great. So. <laughs> but yeah, um, so he, uh, just to clue in the viewers, um, he was at my house building a loft bed for my roommate, who he was friends with. And because um, he's uh, he was an architecture major in school and then worked at a furniture company, a custom furniture company. So he builds furniture. And um, so he was doing that. And then I was working at this theater festival where I worked every single day for an entire month. So I wasn't around a lot. Um, but and then he was around when nobody else was there because he was building this loft and my roommate's room and so that was when he and Lola became friends and so like I came home one day to him having done the made the stick toy and I was like interesting <laughs> this guy this guy might be a keeper yeah so yeah yeah well my I've just been thinking about you all week and sending Aww. hugs and thoughts and just loads of love Thank across you. the Atlantic in your direction because I can't even imagine how hard it is but at least as I said they have the best home and so much love and everyone could see that so she had a really thank good you. life thank you which doesn't mean anything better saying those things but it does so. because I mean a lot of the grief is about for me like I wish I had done things XYZ differently. You know, I wish I had taken her to the vet earlier. So, you know. Yeah. But you can't beat yourself up. I mean, it's natural to beat yourself up. And I think sometimes, I mean, no offense, but you look for it, kind of opportunities to beat yourself up about things that are out, but they're not in your control, they're out of your control. So you just, I think, give yourself a break and give yourself yeah. some love room to grieve and without blame because it's not your fault there's you know you couldn't have done anything and um i did I mean, of, we did everything we yeah. did. don't make it worse for yourself thinking that that's kind of what i mean yeah well on that note perhaps we should yeah. that <laughs> cut yourself some slack <laughs> um it's been I'm really curious to know what you've been crafting up to crafting wise because it's been so long. Uh, I have, um, like I was doing stuff up until a certain time. I mean, a certain time being when she passed away. And then after she passed away, like I had a really hard time doing any, like crafting is usually my way of comforting myself, but I couldn't even do that because the projects that I was working on while I was wait, there was a lot of waiting, you know, for doctor's mm -hmm. appointments and stuff and um, waiting to see if she would get better, which she didn't. And then um, 
So I was like working on certain things to comfort myself at that time. And then when she passed away, I just like could not, you know, yeah. look at those things anymore. Um, and so for a while, it, I mean, for a while, I didn't even feel like I could concentrate on anything new either. But in the first like couple of days, I did a little bit of working on my cozy memories blanket, which was like, I actually don't have it in this room, so I'm not sure I'll be able to show it. But like, I was like knitting so slowly too. It was just like, your brain is so just in grief. I couldn't even, you know, but then I sort of slowly was working out of it and I started something new which I'm excited to show. And then I finally, yesterday, got back to a cross stitch project, which I was like, oh, thank God. Because it's like, I don't know, cross stitch takes, uh, takes more um, brain focus. Yeah, and yeah. planning. And, you know, I uh, didn't have that at the time and I couldn't face it. And so I, you know, it felt good to finally get back to something like that I don't know it's good to have both you know like the thing that I started that was new it was just like I wanted something completely random and unplanned so I joined the Stephen West Mystery Knit Along which is like even more why I you know because it's a mystery so I was just like I need to just so, go yeah and wild you know anyway enough about me I've been talking about me for the last 15 minutes straight do you want to go first or you should first. What a yeah, roll. Because I, because I just <laughs> did that huge tease intro. <laughs> Don't tease me. you got to show I'm me sorry. that. Yeah, I know. Okay, so um, I was working on the pandemic sampler uh, when, up until she passed away. And uh, so this is my progress on it. And I really, really love it. It's You've done so much. So much better, I think, when in monochrome. And I'm totally, beautiful. Totally, that looks yeah. perfect. I'm totally gonna leave the bird. Yeah, I was gonna say, please leave the bird. Why? Yeah. I thought, yeah. Um, this is gonna make you bigger. This is where I got to when she passed away. So uh -huh. I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna fill the heart because. Nice. I mean, I might do something that's a tribute to her in that heart, but it's also not very much space. So I'm not. Uh, I've, I tried to, I started to sketch something out, but it didn't really work because there was not enough space, but, um, also that Did was you really hard to face. Yeah. I think you leave that to last maybe, and then the right thing will come to you. Right. Yeah. Or I still quite like it empty. I feel there's a symbolism and yeah. everything in that as well. Yeah. I could just leave it empty. That's true. Yeah. But I thought also white, like it would balance the, yeah. something in white would balance the bird a little bit, you know. That's true. You've done so much. I feel like I'm just a bit speechless in gobsmacked awe about how much you've done. Because you ripped bits out as well. I did, I yeah. I was really on a roll, which is also why it was a bummer. It's a bummer that my cat died because I was so on a roll with this project and it really <laughs> derailed me. No, that's the worst thing ever in human uh, imagination to say. I feel though it just shows the pure focus and you, it's kind of almost like you trying to distract yourself. It, that's what I meant. The amount you achieve is like pure kind of just. It was the only thing that I was like able to do for probably a whole week because when you're so worried about a loved one passing away, you know, like in critical condition, like I can't, I couldn't do any actual work. I just, I don't know. I was so anxious. So, um, okay. So that was what I did. And then I couldn't do anything for a while. So I started the mystery knit along. So from here until I say, if you guys are joined, if you guys are in the mystery knit along, and you do not want a spoiler, please close your eyes until, until I say you can look. And so this is it. 
So cool. I was about to say, oh, what is it? But I guess it's a mystery, so we won't find out. It looks well, so cool. I like the, the, um, the stripes. I think that's really cool. Thank you. It's supposed to be just these colors, but I just wanted to play with a bunch of colors because I have this one um, shawl that was a mystery knit along. I don't know why I'm doing this. This is the exact same colors on this side. Um, I like it. Just give me the, the context of the, the whole thing. thing. Um, is it a pointed end as well? Is it on a diagonal? Or? It's gonna be like a pyramid. So cool. it's decreasing. I wish I could show this better. I don't have. There's this clue one. How does, so it comes out in in clues, or is this stage one? How yes. does it work? It works like that. I've got it. I, <laughs> it. <laughs> I love the honeycomb kind of pattern with the stitches behind. Yeah, I'm not sure. Like I like it too. I'm not, um, I like want, I wanted these um, stripes to feel more random. There, it's a little bit right now, like there's a big dark patch in the middle with light parts on either end. So it does continue. I'm gonna try to disperse the value contrast a little bit more um, scatteredly. Uh, but I'm really happy that I started to play with color because I have this other mystery knit along shawl that I did a couple of years ago and it's my favorite thing. And the reason why it's so great is that I just, I didn't really follow the rules with color. I just used scraps and I yeah. like very colorful. So, and this is, I'm re I realized like, you know, when I tried to make this pandemic sampler, like all crazy different colors, and then I was like attracted to this other project, which I may or may not talk about later, that was like all a bunch of colors. And then as I was doing this, I was like, oh, I was totally like needing something like that. And this is great because that satisfies that just instinct to like play with color, like at a win, you know, like not. Um, not plan a color palette. I don't know, in this case, it's just a lot easier to pick some colors and be like, this is gonna look great and just like run with it, you know? Yeah. I think it's Stephen West's nice. designs kind of lend themselves exactly. to that as well. Yeah. He so encourages it and I think they're so fun. You can just, you kind of feel like you have a bit more permission to just go with the flow. And as you say, a bit of whimsy, like just yeah. pick what you want and yeah. run with it. Yeah. It looks really cool. Um, it's like cozy and squishy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah this is going to be so nice. This is um, the white, the white stripe in it is Angora. <gasps> and it's. It does like touch a bit. I realize that all my fingers just like long, yeah. easy things. Whole video so far. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's not very many projects, but I've gotten a lot done in each of them. I did also finish the Lydia lace. So good. Outside? Yeah, that's the outside. I love this color as well that you've picked. Thank you, me too. So nice. I think this lighting is really good actually for showing off color yeah. in projects. I'm happy that I went with the natural light. Uh, and then, yeah, and then I returned to this project, which hasn't I just started like um, doing this border all the way down. This is La Nuit by 2X2 Designs on Etsy. There you go. I'm excited to see him when he's done. Yeah. I think that it's like, it's interesting. I was so motivated. I did the, the companion piece, Le Jour, so quickly and um, I've been like, why am I dragging my feet on this? But it's like, it's almost an exact, I mean, it's not exact, but it's a pair. So it's like the same kind of um, composition. So it, I think it just feels like I'm doing that first one again, which is why I'm not like <laughs> super, I mean, I really want the thing, the finished thing, but it's like the process is not as 
exciting and super just kind of dragging yeah a little, a little bit. bit well you've also got loads of other stuff to work on as well right. like you're spreading yourself amongst lots of exciting projects yeah it felt like it was not the most exciting. It wasn't really dragging. It's just like it felt like it was not the most exciting project that I wanted to work on. And then last night, because I wanted to do some cross stitch, but I still can't pick up the pandemic yeah. one yet. I, this is the one I picked up and it felt like a really nice, it felt really nice to get back to stitching. Yeah. So, so yeah. I like it. What have you been working on, Sophie? Well, Emily, thank you so much for asking me. I have been working on my Time Trades shawl. Yes. Got it here in my little Hohe and Co. pamper bucket, which is my favorite thing. Jake was like, how did you fit that in a suitcase? I was like, Jake, it wasn't going in shipping. <sighs> yeah. Um, and I feel like this is going so quickly. Ooh. So, uh, Start with the super stripy gradient side first. So pretty. Um, so yeah, so I'm on the nearly, well, I'm the penultimate color change. So this light stripe here is going to be the next big section. But I'm, I wasn't a big fan, well, I'll admit, I wasn't a huge fan of it until I added the bright pinks. It was feeling, because you know me, Emily, I love, like the neon shades of color, which is mm -hmm. funny because I never really wear that much color, but I seem to be attracted to bright things. Mm. But I'm now liking it a lot more. And then so the last two shades are gonna be the cat sandwich. And then I wanna say Life in the Long Grass that Emily helped me pick. So this is what I was thinking of you this week a lot, especially. Aww. So there to go, but I feel like, I'm hoping it stretches a bit when it's blocked, which I feel like it will. I the think moment it will. It's yeah. For sure. But yeah, it seems to be working to gauge. I may have little bits left over. But I've been really enjoying it. It's kind of yeah. really simple, easy Are those all the um, minis in that area? Yeah, so these were, so there's one mini left to go. Um, and these are all from a J H C, which doesn't sound like the right order. So yeah, A J H D wools. So all twenty gram minis, and from each one, I've had about four grams left over, apart from the last, the darkest color, which had a bit more left. Um, so I think I'll use maybe I'll make a random pair of socks or something. I was thinking with heels and toes that don't match, all the leftover bits. That'd be cute. Yeah, this is going to be my wintry. So both working on shawls. And then that's absolutely all I've been, oh, oh, I don't have it. I finished my test it. Maybe we'll have to videos. Yeah, so I can go run mm -hmm. and go out. It's just in the next room. Maybe I'll bring it out in a minute just to, you know, keep the suspense going. Nice. But I want to show you a new purchase, Emily, because you'll be okay. so excited. Oh, so today, I persuaded Jake to take me to Hobbycraft, mm -hmm. which I suppose is like the UK equivalent of Michael's in terms of assortment and what they sell. Yeah. But I thought to myself, Emily always talks about embroidery and needlecraft. I need to get myself on the band one Yay! Day. I wanted to so, ask, but I didn't want to feel like you, I was pressuring you. Well, no, here we go. It's happening, everyone. It's Yay! Happening. I even had the receipts so I can tell you prices because I was impressed by the value of it too. So I got myself a little embroidery hoop just like you Emily with the wooden one. rubber. Awesome. I was browsing around I was like this is what I need as recommended by E. Peterson and this was really good price where is it? £2.30. This is a six inch one. There's my hand for comparison. Mm -hmm. We do have other sizes too. Other shops are available. <laughs> and then I bought a whole load of embroidery thread. So I'll tell you what I'm planning on making. Um, just reaching into the bag. Maybe I should have got them ready on my lap. No, it's fine. This wasn't planned. So a whole bunch of embroidery thread, they're 95 pence each, just DMC 
their standard um, cotton thread. And then I got one kind of crazy metallic-y colour as well. Ooh. Of the colour. So basically, ever since, so last weekend, I was supposed to go to my grandparents, but unfortunately they're in North Wales, they're in lockdown, so I didn't get to go. Um, so I went to my parents instead. So I've got to fit seeing the family in before we can't do it anymore. And my mum had, so they, I wanted to do needlework or some kind of embroidery for a while because around Emily, it's hard not to want to do that. Thank you, um, that's my uh, great grandma used to make sort of embroidered tablecloths and napkins and stuff. And I actually took some pictures, which I must text you because there are a couple of cross stitch ones and things in there as well. Um, and I just forgot to send them to you. So you might be interested. Yeah. Um, I thought I want to do some embroidered napkins, but make it kind of Sophie style, a bit more modern. And not, you know, the colors weren't necessarily my taste that they had used because this is obviously back in maybe like the 70s, 80s, well, probably even earlier actually, to be honest, 50s, 60s. I'm gonna just name all the decades, apparently. Yeah, 20s, 30s, so, 30s. <laughs> 20s, 30s, other years are also yeah. a bit yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And I want to do some, some thinking, I'm actually gonna get your recommendation on the best kind of fabrics. I haven't bought the fabric yet, but some kind of, I guess, linen-y napkins and maybe a table runner. I'm going to embroider maybe some flowers and some lucases on them, hence kind of the colour selection. Well, to be honest, I want to buy all the colours, but it was kind of overwhelming. There was hundreds of so shades. Yeah. And I was like, you can't just randomly pick up shades and not knowing what you're going to do with them because Jake will potentially have a fit that you're buying more craft things. I'm going to do it slowly, subtly, yeah. build up the collection. Right. Um, so yeah, that's the plan. I haven't got any further in my idea, but that's what I'm thinking. Napkins. Yeah. yeah. So two metallic-y ones, which are really cool. I just caught my eye, so I'm like a magpie, and then just mm -hmm. a whole load of other dark shades. So it's happening. I'm so excited. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I was even buying up the cross-stitch kits, and I was like, let's walk before we run. Yeah, so right. <laughs> I wonder if it's, I mean, I'm not sure that it's easier to do embroidery, but it's like, as I mean, whatever it is, because they're kind of just different things. Yeah, I'm thinking, because with the embroidery, I like to be a bit less, because I'm just going to go for it, so I'm thinking I might be able to get a little texture that way. Yeah. Not necessarily plan, do the classic Sophie and really plan everything out and just start and see what happens, which may be right. a bad idea. But who knows? No, I think that's a great but, idea. Like I was talking about with my mystery middle on, yeah. like, I really felt like I needed something unplanned. Very specifically, I needed something unplanned and needed to play with color and just like free up my creativity. That's like, I think that whenever I am in a creative rut, whether something bad in my life has happened or not, like I have to do something where it's like a I'm just a little a lot looser you know and then yeah. and then I can go back to the I don't know more structured projects I guess is what I'm saying yeah I'm excited I'm finally I feel part of the you know now I've bought some supplies I'm like I'm part of the club you're part of the club <laughs> yeah to do yeah <laughs> yay I've been fabrics online this morning because I don't think there are any fabric shops really if there are fabric shops in Cheltenham that I need to go to please let me know um but I'm also kind of desperate just to have something basically like by the weekend so I'm thinking what can I get online so I'm thinking like maybe a fine like a soft linen-y sort of fabric I don't really know I thought maybe it would be better than cotton because of the the texture um, so I've done a lot more cross stitch than I have done embroidery. So I have to say I'm not an expert on embroidery fabrics in particular. Yeah. And so if anybody out there is and knows better than me, please do comment because 
I'm gonna say a bunch of you know stuff <laughs> out of my thumb, and you know uh, I might be wrong. So, but I feel like so I have two separate thoughts. One of which is a regular cotton just for practicing if it's not going to be used in a practical application, I think is the best way to go because it's a tight weave and it's pretty cheap. So it's like, but um, because the only thing about linen is that it can sometimes be a little bit of a looser weave. You want like a really flat, plain weave. And when I've tried to do some, like, do you know what twill is? Like the ah. twill is like when it's diagonal. One time I tried to make napkins on a twill, like embroider, a flower on napkins with it that were twill fabric and it didn't really I mean it went fine but like it didn't I wasn't able to be as precise as I wanted mm. to be with where I put my needle and it like didn't so you want something flat linen is great because it is a flat texture but it's a little bit of a looser weave than cotton yeah. so or it can be like actually linen has kind of a wide variety of like how dense it is or like tightly woven I guess so um you would want to look for a fine like a linen with fine threads that's like a mm. you know it has a close weave. High, yeah high and close weave. but that also being said like linen is probably nicer for napkins than cotton just like for using the yeah. napkins you know I mean, maybe not. Maybe use cotton as science for napkins. Yeah, it's because I was trying to think, and then um, I had a quick browse around online. So I was like, oh, would it be easier just to buy ready-made napkins and embroider them than make my own napkins? Slash yeah. also, you know, from a budget budget-friendly perspective. Right. Yeah. But all the fashion ones, I couldn't seem to find. Basically, I probably need to do more research. This is a thought that entered my head approximately two hours ago. Uh -huh. So I'm like. I know everything that's on the internet, but really I've looked about two websites. <laughs> um, so I think you're right. It's all about finding the right texture. I'm something a bit more relaxed. I'm a bit worried that sometimes with cotton, it's all a bit, I don't know. I probably should look into it. But I think you're right about, I need to get something with the right weave and right. that. Yeah. That's the only thing about pre-made napkins because that was the situation that I ran into when I had my twill experience, those were pre-made napkins. Yeah. But um, they do sell that kind of thing. Like if you look, if you do a Google for, um, I'm just pausing because I like to, I'm like, do I explain that I like the phrase do a Google? I, I was, you know, gonna yeah, say search, I like but I like to say do a Google, because it's funny. Um, <laughs> And uh, blah, 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 blah. They do make, yeah, if you do a Google search, do a Google for um, like napkins for embroidery or something like that. I think that that kind of thing, that exists. That's a good idea. I love how I didn't, I mean, I hadn't even think about earlier and I was just Googling napkins. Well, I didn't think about it either until I worked at a craft <laughs> store and I was like, oh, this is such a good idea for a product. Um, yeah. Yeah. That is such a good idea. Okay. That's why I'm going to do a Google as soon as we finish this. Good. <laughs> Go do a Google. I also That's think there'll be in my bonnet about just getting started on it now. Yeah. I have a bee in my bonnet about you getting started on it. <laughs> I'm very excited. Um, I also liked that you said, I know everything on the internet. I think that might be the episode title. I mean, it's true. Spend five minutes, you know everything on the internet. Yeah. <laughs> um, I've got one more shopping purchase. It's not actually for me, but I thought I might as well share it here anyway, because um, it's a really good company. And if anyone's in the UK, it's kind of worth looking into. And also this video will be going up after I've given said gift, so it'll be fine. So this little parcel arrived yesterday. I probably should cover up my address, shouldn't I? I mean, oh, I'm not sure I didn't see it. I just thought the, the 
so cute. The so tape pretty. is so cute. Yeah, oh, little, little snippets. Yeah. Stuff. Um, so this is from a company on Etsy called The Modern Crafter. And they sell sun embroidery kits and punch needling kits. And it's two sisters. So from memory, it's two sisters, um, one of whom is an illustrator. So she designs all of the products. And then the other sister runs the company, does the businessy side. That may be incorrect. and underselling the other sister. So I apologize. This is their logo. Mm -hmm. um, they're really lovely. I met them in person at a craft show once and they're really nice. So I've ordered my brother's um, fiance, Laura. It was her birthday last week. So I thought, let's get her into punch needling. Yes. What craft can she have in her life that's kind of, I feel, quite beginner friendly and quick and easy to do? Like it's a good gateway craft, I feel, mm -hmm. because you can sit down in the afternoon and have a thing. Um, so we got her one of the beginner kits. Maybe yeah, I should get a picture of it up on my phone. Because it's actually really nicely wrapped. I'm not going to unwrap it. But it comes in a really nice little kind of bag with our logo on. And everything you need is in the kit. And it's just the shape of a monstera leaf. Um, again, I didn't have this ready. But I want to show you, Emily. We can talk about punch needling in the interim and how... I quite like it, but I've only made, ever made two things. But obviously, I needed all the things to go with it. I've never and this arrived the next day. I ordered this on Thursday, and it arrived Friday. Wow. Well, that was yeah, that was ridiculous. Isn't that crazy? That's so fast. Yeah. Are they in the um, UK? They, must they are based in the UK. Um, I'm not sure whereabouts in the UK they're based, but I've ordered things from them before and they, they're always really helpful um, on their messages. They have really good stuff. They also sell the Amy Oxford needles, which are kind of a bit harder to get hold of in the UK. Um, so they have, they're based in Saffron Walden. I don't know where that is, somewhere in England. So this is what we got her. Uh, this kit. Turn so pretty. Yes, yeah, so it comes with a the thread, everything. They've got a couple of other beginner kits and things Ooh. as well. So if you're looking to get into a craft, um, they've got some really nice things. And let me show you their embroidery just while we're here. Already. Because they have some really sweet. Aww. This and I quite like these birds actually. I'm thinking about embroidering a denim jacket at some point, and yes. those are beautiful too. Yeah, yeah. Maybe so I should read that up so I can check that what I've said about them is correct. Yeah, sisters Rachel and Siobhan. Um, so Siobhan is an experienced print designer, and and I love a print designer and has worked for major fashion and homeware brands. And then when, her, when, so when Rachel, the other sister, was on mat leave, she picked up her love of crafting again and asked her sister to design her something. And they basically decided to create the company together from that to help people um, feel confident with crafting, feel great, and make things easy and fun, which is what crafting is all about, feeling great and having fun. Yeah. Not necessarily easy part because sometimes it's really complicated and you kind of right. thrive on it. <laughs> yeah, I just thought it was worth shouting them out because I thought that was so amazing with the delivery. Um, they also sell, put that way, sell monk's cloth and anything else you might need for kind of punch needling stuff. I want to make some punch needle cushions. <sighs> so many things on the tomato yeah, list. Last time when um, we talked about uh, needlepoint, like, so I have, I told you, so I've had all this needlepoint yarn that I inherited from somebody who passed away, yeah. somebody I didn't know who passed away, somebody I know, their roommate passed away, and then they gave me their needlepoint yarn. And there was like, 
five enormous trash bags of it at one point in time. And I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. I'm going to do this really like beautiful wall art piece. And um, it's going to, and then I never did for a long time. And so after a while of um, it just, being in our tiny New York City apartment, uh, I was like, okay, this is gonna get donated to <laughs> um, Materials for the Arts, which is in New York, a place where you can donate art materials to like uh, non and uh, non profit companies can uh, be the beneficiary of your donated materials, which I've been the beneficiary of materials for the arts. Um, in small theatrical productions, so it felt really good to yeah. give back in that way. And um, but I kept a small amount. And uh, ever since, I'm just like, oh, well, I want to do some like embroidery with it, or I want to do this like a cross stitch, like a big, a large scale cross stitch. And then you were talking about um, that one needlepoint person on Instagram whose name I don't yeah. remember and I was just like uh, why don't I yeah. just do needlepoint like why don't I just do like a regular old me like what it's made for it doesn't mean I have to do something like that looks granny ish yeah or, I mean I kind of like a granny ish style but like you know in a cheeky way like in a millennial sort of way um yeah. like I can just do a pillow like that I'm just fun. trying to find something. I've just had a sudden thought as well of something else like I should do. Instagram of what you should do with it. So I'm going to see if I can find it in my saved pictures because I can't remember the company, but it's the same um, size thread. And then obviously my Wi-Fi is now taking ages. And it was a, almost like a tapestry kind of, I can't remember what it's called off the top of my head. Maybe it's on my other. This short interlude while I try. Right. <laughs> it was, it's kind of, you know, um, I guess, yeah, kind of tapestry where you go, it's just half cross stitches. I'm thinking, mm -hmm. I think I'm thinking of the right thing. And then they make it into really modern design. So you might get um, like people at the beach or I love how when I try and find something, I can't find it at all. I feel like maybe it's from a knitting company, but was embroidery. That's how I should go back through and organize stuff. I feel like I've got a real double chin going on right now as well. Mm -mm. Don't worry, we're cutting out all this but you don't have a double chin. I mean, I haven't got it. I feel like it was either, okay, I'm going to Google. Maybe it was We Are The Knitters. Hmm. Petit Point, Petit Point. It was, we are the knitters. Okay. Um, also, can we, my French accent is so bad. Okay, I found it. It's loading, we're nearly there. <laughs> I'm um, so excited, anticipation. Pet well, excuse a French accent. So petit point or petite point. So it's kind of a, a tapestry. So it's half, half stitches. Um, but you can do, well, Emily, you're so creative and into print design. I imagine it would be really cool if you designed your own one to do. Mm -hmm. Putting all this on you. Yeah, no, no. I um, totally have time for time for that. It's kind of, it comes out sort of a tapestry texture. Ooh. Um, and you can do, it's the same thread, but they've got all these, Ooh. I'll send you the link. Yeah. But all these different ones. I love those. 
And you can make it into cushions or wall hangings. That's exactly what I need. Some, like, a modern inspiration for... Yeah. I really like this one. So this is called Wool Pawn. I mean, who doesn't love a bit of wool pawn? But I just quite like... Because we're also into typography and stuff That's as well. That's really my style. I love that. Uh, I'm texting this one to you right now. Thank you. Thank you. Everyone, you can see us in action. Um, that, something like that would be cool with it as well. There's all different prints and things. That's from, oh, it's failed, just a send. Okay, I'm gonna forward it to you. Copy. So yeah, we are the knitters. That was on their website. I've just texted it to you again, so you should get it. I'm, I started to work on this while you were looking, but now I've lost my... What does the back side of it look like? That's what I was intrigued about earlier. Is it slip stitches or yeah. how? Oh, really neat. That's not how I expected it to look. Thank you. I, I am not. even, what? I said, that's not how I expected it to look, but I also don't know how I expected it to look. Oh, messy. I mean, it would, I learned how to weave in my ends as I go a long time ago or about a year ago. And it's made, a huge difference in like how much I can play with color, like feel yeah. like I can freely play with color without being like, oh, so many ends to weave in. And it's so easy if you know how to do color work. I was about to say, what's the with two what's hands? The well, I would love to do a tutorial on Patreon. Uh, <laughs> this is like a thing that, you know, we haven't started our Patreon yet, but we are wanting to. Before Lola passed away and I had like my life entirely be flipped upside down, I was like saying, I was thinking we should launch that like this yeah. thing, you know, but obviously that didn't happen because of a death in the family. <laughs> But now you've given a nice teaser for everyone, so right. we could also gather some ideas of maybe we could look to launch it maybe next month. Yeah. And in the meantime, people could let us know what kinds of things they'd be interested in seeing. Right. Emily's a magic knitter, by the way, so her tips and tricks would be well worth watching. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm wondering what I'm bringing. <laughs> no, you definitely bring knitting to the table. I don't know. I didn't, sorry, what was that? I said just stuff. Uh, Tea cakes, entertainment, <laughs> general distractions. It's true. I mean, you're lovely. Yeah. I'm admiring a jumper today, Emily, as well. I need oh, to make this pack. Thank you. This is the Arbor Vitae by Hohi Locatelli. Um, I do not remember the name of the yarn, but it's, um, I think it's from the company Lang. Um, the yarn is so nice though. Like I, you know, it's sweater weather now, but it wasn't before. So like, I haven't worn this in a year and I put it on. I was like, oh yeah, that's right. I like this yarn is so amazing because it's a chain fly and I'm not sure if it's wool and spun or not, but like, it's so airy. Like the yarn is so light and elastic. And anyway, it's got like 10% cashmere in it. So it's like, they advertise it as like, oh, it's a cashmere yarn, and it's like, okay, not really, but um, but yeah, it's really nice. If I can find the name of the yarn, I'll put it on the screen. Yeah, and I also nice. cropped the pattern. The pattern is supposed to be, um, sorry to interrupt you. The it's supposed to be the same, the same color. The tassel is supposed to be the same color as the sweater, and it also is supposed to go to like here with waist shaping. But I've never made that kind of sweater before. And I'm definitely more into the cropped style. When I was making this, Tim was like saying, like, looks very like Spanish. You know, it's like, I can be into that. Yeah. Or like little maracas. When you were doing that, I was thinking of the song, it goes, shimmy, 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 sha. 
<laughs> well, la la la. I mean, that was a really bad rendition. I know, I know that song. Perhaps we should all pretend we didn't hear that. <laughs> <sighs> well, I, like um, it. I think it looks really good. Cool. That's you. a good length. I like it too. I like it a lot. Um, would you like to show your finished sweater? Yes, I'm going to run grab it. I'll be back. Where's she going? <laughs> The door's coming off its hinges, so it's a bit of a mm. challenge. Oh, I'm back. Hi. Out of breath. Hi, Lucas. So, he's, yeah. Hello. He looks really confused right now. Nice. He's woken up. He's been so annoying. So we've had people decorating and making the house look even more amazing than it already did. He's just been so grumpy the whole past week because there have been people in his space. So he keeps, whenever anyone tries to go to the toilet, he's on full alert. They can't get away with it without being barked at. But anyway, so I finished my Making Stories test knit for issue five, the Bindweed Cardigan. Yay! <laughs> Got it done. Designed it. by... Life is cozy on Instagram and Ravelry. I won't try to attempt to pronounce her actual name. I think it's Kenzia, um, but that could also be entirely incorrect. So I apologize if it is. But I love it. I made the sleeves slightly too long. I did the classic Sophie thing. And I think I need to start measuring my swatches pre and after blocking so I get it right. Um, they're probably maybe like half, well, half an inch to an inch too long. So not drastically, like it looks fine when it's on. It's just kind of more of an extra belt that kind of folds over a bit more rather than um, just looking like this. So I don't mind it too much. I have really long arms, so. That'll be nice and cozy. Yes, I wore it last week. Maybe I can try it on over my jumper for you. I wore it last week and forced Jake to take multiple photos of me. Um, so you can see it's not like ridiculously too long, but oh, so pretty. it is like, so I think the original pattern was 15 inches and I made it 19 and a half before the cuff. So I have ridiculously long arms, but yeah, I love it. So it's got, it's kind of a cropped fit. So I mm -hmm. guess the same sort of fit that you like, um, I like too. And yeah, I love it. It's is really like fold over hem. Yep, fold over hem. Ooh, at the bottom. I've never done that before. Me neither, but I really like how it looks, especially. Can you see that? Yeah. Can you see it on the back? Yeah. Um, okay. Let me take it off so actually I can show you better rather than trying to show you on my body with my back to the camera. I was also really. Two things I love about this pattern without giving away the pattern's secrets. Um, I barely had any, well, I didn't have any grafting to do. So rather than, I've never made a jumper this way. So rather than knitting the sleeves, you know, you make extra stitches and then Kitchener stitch the underarm to the sleeve. You pick up the stitches and then start knitting in the round straight away, which I really enjoyed. And I feel like gave a nicer finish to the underarm, which I've now lost. Kind of made it a bit, look a bit more seamless. Um, and I also really enjoyed how you start it. So you basically start by knitting this section and then you pick up all the other stitches to knit off it. So at the end, I think I literally had two ends to weave in and that was it. It was really good. That's amazing. Because no one likes weaving in ends. Um, 
And yeah, and also the bind off was a really nice kind of elastic bind off I hadn't tried before. So I feel like the thing with the pattern I'll take onto other patterns. Um, and yeah, it was just really super quick. <laughs> well, relatively, I thought I was gonna hiccup then. Relatively quick because of the raglan. So you literally start from here and work down. It's so beautiful. I love um, yeah. finishing on the inside that corner of the bottom, the, the bottom, the corner, like where the cardigan front. Right this bit. <laughs> like right there. Don't you know, don't you <laughs> right can't there. see where I'm pointing? Yeah, this but section. on the inside. It's so neat. That corner is so neat. Yeah. Yeah, it's I think beautiful. it looks nice from the inside and the outside. Yeah, it's gorgeous. You did a great job. Yeah, I think I bound off and then just stitched over it. Um, and then I was wondering whether to kind of seal these ends up, mm. but you're not told to in the pattern. And I kind of like it because in a way it sort of mirrors the cabling. Ah. So I don't know if it was design intentional or not, but I'm going to say that it obviously was. Another thing I like is this... Um, Basically, um, I guess it kind of looks like a chain, but you knit through the front or the back loop, depending on what side you're knitting, and it creates this really nice almost border. Mm. Yeah, overall, just a really pleasant design to work on. Apart from the bubbles, they were the one thing that I wasn't such a big fan of, but everything else. Were they the kind that you have to turn your work? No, so it was literally, um, knit through the front and back, but with yarn overs. And truth be told, I mean, in the pattern it said to do them just with your, so it was knit through the front and back. So in the end you end up with about nine loops on your whatever needle it was. And then it was like slip through, slip them back onto the other needle and knit through the back loop. I just did the yarn overs, knit through front and back and got a darning needle and then brought the thread through that way because I tried doing it knitting through the back loop and it was so tricky to do i think i did it for two and i was like this is too hard i can't do anymore so i just brought the thread through the needle and then made the loop that sounds really complicated but i think you know what i mean do you know what, am i explaining it in a good way i know no. i'm <laughs> so bad with like verbal explanations and I like I'm really visual I need to see it but um yeah. so it's not you but I I Ooh. think I know what you're talking about and bubbles are just hard no matter what it's the thing you know yeah, and there's so many different ways of doing them I guess you could probably choose to do them a different way if you wanted to it does give quite a nice I mean find a good bubble because with bubbles they're also a bit temperamental sometimes they look yeah. better than others but they do it does give you this nice Those are cute ones loop so basically i guess um so you knit through front and back yarn overs your stitches are on your right hand needle and you have this whole like all these stitches on your right needle and then the pattern said to slip all those back onto your left needle to then knit through the back so instead of doing that knit i basically just all like individually through the back loop or knit everything at once everything at once, which was a challenge. Like I couldn't bring the needle, I kept slipping, the thread kept slipping off. Yeah, it just kept slipping before I could bring it back. I was like, this is impossible. So instead of doing that, I basically took my, the working yarn end, thread it through a darning needle, brought the needle, so these are my stitches. This is gonna look really rude, but. <laughs> I'll say, put the needle you through. This. This. <laughs> the needle went through, and then <laughs> the loop would end up on the right. Maybe I'll do a demo sometime. Um. <laughs> <laughs> but if it was the working yarn, it's attached to a ball. Or did you make like a loop and attach and thread that through a darning needle? needle? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So. Let's, so basically, yeah. when I get some yarn, that would make it easier to explain. So yeah, the, I think we got there. Yeah. Well, so basically, 
yeah, so this was attached, the balls here, this was attached, and I just went like this, right. put that through the needle, and then that was what ended up on my right needle with the other stitches attached. That's smart. That's smart. God, could I have made that any more no. complicated? <laughs> with any ruder hand gestures? Probably not. <laughs> we uh, thought this was a clean podcast. Well, mm -hmm. you were wrong. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that was the only challenge in the pattern, but other people may not quite, I didn't, I mean, to be honest, I also wasn't part of any of the test knit chatter groups because apparently I'm not very sociable and I just wasn't kind of interested in that part for test knit. So other people may have found other ways around it or have the same issues, I don't know, um, because I didn't speak to anyone else. <laughs> Hashtag antisocial. Um, <laughs> But yeah. And how's everything with the, with settling in, in your house? Yeah, it's been really good. I mean, it has been, as I said, we had um, workmen here for the past week and we had painters back in today. So it's been a bit sort of funny as we came out of quarantine, had a Friday and a weekend to ourselves and then basically had people in the house all week I mean, doing an amazing job. So painting, electrician coming around to fit outside lights and fix our thermostat because it turns out that's why our heating wasn't working because the thermostat wasn't even attached to our boiler. So it's just been, they've been doing a really good job, but you know when there's people basically in your hole downstairs and you can't kind of do the normal things that you would do. So I'm looking forward to them being finished. They're here tomorrow and then they're not here for the rest of the week. So it's quite nice to wander around and just without having to minimize trips downstairs or trips to the kitchen, which sounds really, um, it's like a stupid thing to complain no. about. There's not everyone has that and has the choice or whatever. Right. And it, yeah, it is. I'm not even complaining because they're really nice. They're really friendly. Like it's good to chat to them. It's just, I really value my own space. Space. space yeah yeah so it's not even difficult so it's not a complaint it's just uh it'll be really good when they're all finished and everything's looking amazing so our whole so our living room is now all this pale gray so we had a mustard accent wall before it's now gone so i'd be able to put our plants and stuff back in it up um i put an ikea you might be able to see this black frame so this is an ikea day bed Put that together yesterday felt a great sense of accomplishment i can't even tell you how many parts this thing came in it was like classic ikea and we're looking at it on the picture like oh that can't have that many parts to it and it turned up in these two boxes with all these black poles and i'm thinking why there's so many poles i think all together well it's gonna be a total exaggeration and made up number like 140 poles that's <laughs> Makeup. but it was ridiculous how many parts it came in and two of the parts were missing so we had to drive to ikea in bristol on saturday morning and you know how people are in ikea on a weekend it's like the hunger games we got there for 10 a.m when it opened people were already in the car park it was already full running towards the front doors like who needs swedish meatballs that desperately people in bristol apparently so yeah, it was just crazy. So then I, it's like a two hour round trip just to pick up some spare parts, but just got it done. It's been a really relaxing week. Haven't done too much. The weather's been nice. My parents came over at the weekend, which was lovely. We cooked, or I say Jake, who's my husband, cooked curries on Saturday. So we had two slow cooked curries and lentils. Hey, Lucas. Oh. Hey. Um, he's just been barking all week. So he's really found his voice. It's been great. Oh, good. And homemade naan breads. And we cooked a roast yesterday. So had Yorkshire pudding, some roast potatoes, with a spatchcocked chicken. Just been a weekend of eating, really. It's been good. It's been really That's nice. That kind of weekend. There it is. Yeah. It's been. I ate so many roast potatoes, but they're my favorite. 
it was, and all the, I was like, oh, at least we've got leftover Yorkshire puddings. Not for much longer, you know, kept walking past the bowl, like, oh, I'll just have one more little bite, all gone. I've never had a Yorkshire pudding. What is, what is it? Oh my, well, you probably wouldn't have. I'm not saying, oh my God, but why would you? Um, they're essentially, so it's batter. So I guess like any normal kind of batter, the same as pancake batter, so eggs and flour and salt. And then you basically, they go in the oven. So you fill say like a muffin tray. You put a bit of oil on the bottom, preheat the oil in the oven so it's really hot and bubbling. Pour the batter into each muffin cake, it's like three quarters full, and they puff up and they become these delicious, puffy, battery of a picture. Yum. Kind of look like this. Yum. Yeah, I saw that picture on Instagram. They look so And then you good. just have them with, I'm sorry, yeah, it just tastes. I guess similar to a pancake batter, mm. but just coffee. Um, but some people have them with jam. Like my brother eats leftover Yorkshire puddings with jam on top. Um, so they can, I guess, be sweet or savory depending on what part of the country you live in. But I must say, our state lasts long enough to really have leftovers. Oh, you're broken up. You, bro you broke up a little bit. Now you're a little frozen. Oh, there you are. Oh, yeah, I know. I thought that. I was just. Here I am. Yay, hi. Um, I also oh, saw. I'm back, I'm back. Are you a sweet or savory household? I'm a savory. I've never had it with jam. Though I did see a recipe where someone used leftover Yorkshire puddings to make a bread pudding. But I'm not a big fan of hot desserts. So um, I'm sure it'd be very nice, but I haven't tried it. I'll send you a recipe and you can bring a little bit of the UK to NY. That would be so good. Oh my God, I would. I would love that. The trick is to not open the oven while they're cooking. Um, and you basically cook them on like 200 and well, I guess that'd be more like 400 and something, like 45 or something, and not open the oven until they've risen and you think they're kind of overcooked because otherwise they sink. But they're really easy and they're really delicious. Very Moorish. I think you'll like them. I think I will like them too. Um, well, I think we should maybe sign off. Um, since yeah, we've done... ranted on about Yorkshire puddings. Well, I mean, that was a, that was a <laughs> delight for my ears. Um, but let these crafters carry on with their day. Yeah. And okay. we will see you next week. Thank you for watching. Um, please like and subscribe and comment below. We love to hear your feedback and interact with you. Um, we've been loving all the comments so far. So thank you very much. Thank you for watching. Until next week, don't forget to take it slow. Bye. Bye.